As the smoldering remains of the car crackled under the watchful eyes of the firefighters, a team of seasoned investigators circled the scene, their senses attuned to the subtleties that lay within the chaos. The air was thick with the acrid smell of burnt metal and rubber, a sensory reminder of the destructive force they were confronting. Each officer carried the weight of experience, their minds a repository of countless scenes witnessed and puzzles solved, yet the sight before them promised a challenge unlike any they had encountered. The question that now haunted everyone was clear. If Clayton did not perish in the fire, how did he end up in that car? And more importantly, was it even Clayton in the driver's seat? In a small Texas town, Clayton and Molly Daniels' seemingly normal life took a dramatic turn when they decided to fake a death and forge a new existence. Their plan, crafted in secrecy, promised a fresh start away from past troubles. However, the truth, persistent and undeniable, slowly began to surface, threatening to dismantle their carefully constructed facade. This is the story of a couple who stepped into a web of deceit, only to discover the inescapable nature of reality. Their lives took a dark turn as they meticulously planned to fake Clayton's death, a bold move driven by desperation and the hope of a new beginning. Their plan involved staging a tragic accident, a burned car and a body beyond recognition, believing their secret would remain hidden in the ashes. The scheme was carried out with careful attention to detail, but even the best laid plans are vulnerable to unexpected turns. The unraveling began with a routine police stop. Clayton, presumed dead, was recognized, and the truth started to surface. The revelation sent shockwaves through their community, uncovering a plot that seemed unfathomable. The story of Clayton and Molly Daniels is more than a crime tale. It's a narrative about human choices and the inevitable truth. It shows how far individuals might go to change their fate and how truth, no matter how deeply buried, has a way of emerging. On an unremarkable day, June 18, 2004, Corporal William Talamantes from the Texas Department of Public Safety received a distressing call. It led him to a chilling spectacle on the outskirts of Leander. A car was fiercely burning, its flames so intense that the small vehicle was wedged against a tree, completely engulfed. The once mundane car was now a ravaged husk, its paint stripped away by the fire's wrath. As the evening sky painted itself in hues of orange and pink, smoke spiraled upward, marking the spot of a grim revelation that would soon shake the local community. Corporal Talamantes was met with a vision of ruin, the car was a charred shell, its structure warped by the fire's ferocity. The heat was extraordinary, emanating from the wreckage, suggesting an intensity beyond the usual scope of vehicle fires. The car, as if discarded by an unseen force, rested against a tree. Its tires burst, its interior hollowed and blackened by the flames. After the firefighters managed to control the blaze, a horrifying discovery was made in the driver's seat. What remained of a human body was found, so severely burned that it was not recognizable. This shocking sight profoundly disturbed the emergency responders. The air was heavy with the gravity of what had been found. Questions arose among the officers and emergency personnel. Who was the person in the driver's seat? What chain of events led to this catastrophic end? The scene, with the car's distorted structure and stripped paint, stood silently, holding the secrets of the unfolding mystery. When the remnants of the body were found, Lori Daniels, filled with dread and anxiety, had just arrived. She was searching for her son, Clayton, who had mysteriously disappeared the night before. Clayton was meant to visit her to pick up some books in a car part, but never made it. Her worry escalated when she spoke to her daughter-in-law, Molly, the following morning. Molly, too, was fraught with anxiety. She recalled hearing Clayton drive away in their only car, which was actually borrowed from a friend. Unbeknownst to her, this ordinary evening was about to morph into a living nightmare. As Lori retraced the potential route Clayton might have taken, her worst fears materialized when she stumbled upon the smoldering remains of what seemed like her son's last journey. She immediately informed Molly, who, in a state of shock and disbelief, rushed to the scene. The car, a Chevy Cavalier, matched the description of their borrowed vehicle. When the flames were finally tamed and investigators could probe the wreckage, they discovered personal belongings that chillingly pointed to Clayton being the unfortunate soul within the incinerated vehicle. 
In the days that followed, the community mourned the tragic loss of Clayton Wayne Daniels, a 24-year-old unemployed mechanic whose life had been claimed by the merciless fire. Clayton and Molly, despite their struggles, were known to share a profound bond, often described by friends and coworkers as the love of each other's lives. Clayton had embraced the role of a father for Molly's child, treating her as his own, a testament to the depth of their relationship. The memorial service for Clayton was a somber affair, attended by over a hundred people, a reflection of the impact he had on those around him. However, the eulogy delivered by Clayton's best friend cast a shadow over the proceedings. His words painted a picture of Clayton far removed from the loving partner and father, hinting at a darker side to the man they were all gathered to remember. Amidst the grief, a troubling picture began to emerge. The circumstances surrounding the accident were peculiar, to say the least. Investigators noted the absence of skid marks at the scene and the curious fact that the car seemed to have rolled gently down the incline rather than crashing with the force one would expect from a vehicular accident. Further examination of the vehicle raised more questions than answers. The car's mechanics, including the engine, gas tank, and wiring, were found intact, debunking the theory of a spontaneous mechanical failure. The source of the fire was a mystery, but the discovery of lighter fluid, typically used for igniting charcoal grills, pointed to a sinister possibility, arson. As the investigation deepened, a startling revelation came to light. The autopsy of the remains found in the car suggested that the person had not inhaled any smoke or burning material. This crucial piece of evidence indicated that the victim had not been alive during the fire. The question that now haunted everyone was clear. If Clayton did not perish in the fire, how did he end up in that car? And more importantly, was it even Clayton in the driver's seat? The absence of skid marks near the scene was the first anomaly that caught the investigators' attention. In typical vehicular accidents, the desperate screech of tires fighting against momentum marks the road, a physical testament to a driver's last second attempt to avert disaster. But here, the road was unsettlingly pristine as if the car had been placed at the scene with a careful, deliberate touch, rather than arriving there as the result of a driver's loss of control. As the lead investigator knelt beside the charred remains of the vehicle, he noted the way the fire had consumed the car. The intensity of the blaze was unusual. Fires resulting from most car accidents tend to be localized and burn out quickly once the fuel source is exhausted. However, this fire had a ferocity that spoke of something more sinister a voraciousness that suggested the involvement of an accelerant, turning the vehicle into a veritable furnace that left little behind but ash and questions. The team moved with precision, documenting every detail, knowing that each observation could be the key to unraveling the mystery. The position of the vehicle against the tree was peculiar. It bore the marks of a gentle descent rather than a violent crash. The lack of significant disturbances on the path it had taken the absence of debris typically strewn in the wake of a collision, all painted a picture that contradicted the narrative of a simple car accident. As the investigators conferred, sharing observations and hypotheses, the possibility of foul play began to crystallize in their minds. The scene before them was starting to look less like a tragic mishap and more like a stage upon which a dark and calculated act had been performed. The stillness of the surrounding area, the absence of witnesses, and the peculiarities of the scene wove together into a tapestry of suspicion. With each passing moment, the urgency of the investigation mounted. The body in the driver's seat, a silent witness to its own demise, held secrets that the team was determined to uncover. The unnaturally intense fire had done its best to erase evidence, but the investigators were determined, their resolve hardened by the knowledge that justice demanded an answer from the mute remains and the scarred earth. As the authorities delved deeper, the facade that Molly had carefully constructed began to crumble. Her behavior, her lack of emotion, and her seemingly premature eagerness to move on raised eyebrows. The discovery of a substantial life insurance policy on Clayton's life added a financial motive to the mix, painting a picture of a woman who might have had more to gain from her husband's death than just sympathy. The life insurance company's revelation that Molly had been aggressively pursuing the claim only added fuel to the fire of suspicion. The community that had once rallied around Molly, offering support and comfort, now looked at her with a mixture of disbelief and betrayal.
Her co-workers, who had generously contributed to help the bereaved family, now questioned the authenticity of her grief. Neighbors whispered about the new man in Molly's life, a figure who seemed to have filled the void left by Clayton far too quickly. The sterile confines of the autopsy room stood in stark contrast to the chaotic scene of the car fire. Here, beneath the harsh clinical light, the remains of the victim awaited examination, silent yet poised to reveal the secrets held in the aftermath of the blaze. The medical examiner, a seasoned professional well-versed in the language of the dead, approached the task with a mix of reverence and scientific curiosity, aware that the story about to be uncovered could alter the trajectory of the investigation. As the autopsy commenced, the room was filled with palpable tension, each incision a step closer to the truth. The examination of the lungs was a critical component, a gateway to understanding the final moments of the victim's life. In cases of death by fire, the lungs often tell a tale of desperate struggle, the presence of soot and smoke a silent witness to the victim's final breaths amid the flames. However, this case defied expectation. The examiner's findings sent a ripple of shock through the room. The lungs were clear, devoid of any traces of soot or inhalation of smoke. This pivotal revelation shattered the notion of a straightforward death in a car fire, suggesting instead that the victim had not been alive when the flames began their destructive dance. The absence of soot in the lungs was a silent scream in the quiet of the autopsy room, a piece of evidence that demanded a re-evaluation of everything assumed about the incident. The nature of the victim's death was now shrouded in doubt. The authenticity of the accident scene called into question. The investigators, who had been piecing together the narrative of a car accident, now found themselves at the edge of an abyss, staring into the depths of a potentially darker and more complex scenario. The case took an even more bewildering turn with the results of the DNA tests. The anticipation was palpable as the investigators awaited confirmation of the victim's identity, expecting to close at least one chapter of the mystery. However, the revelation that the DNA did not match Clayton Daniels, but instead belonged to Charlotte Davis, an elderly woman with no apparent connection to the scene, turned the case on its head. The moment of discovery was one of profound shock and disbelief, a paradigm shift that propelled the narrative into uncharted territory. The identification of Charlotte Davis as the victim introduced a multitude of questions. How had the body of an elderly woman come to replace that of Clayton Daniels in such a macabre tableau? What sinister machinations had led to this moment, where the life of an unsuspecting individual had been entwined with the fate of another in the most tragic of circumstances? The revelation demanded a complete re-evaluation of the case, each previously gathered piece of evidence, now a fragment of a larger, more disturbing puzzle. The answer to that question came in a manner as dramatic as the story itself. Clayton was ultimately apprehended at a Taco Bell in a manner that combined diligent police work and a touch of the unexpected. After the shocking revelation that the body in the car was not Clayton, but an elderly woman, the investigation intensified, leading authorities to place Molly Daniels under surveillance. It was during this period of observation that investigators noticed suspicious behavior that suggested Clayton might still be alive. Molly was observed leaving her home with a man who bore a striking resemblance to Clayton, except for his conspicuously dyed black hair. The pair drove to a Taco Bell, seemingly just another couple out for a casual lunch. However, their ordinary outing was about to take a dramatic turn. The police, already on alert, and suspecting that the man with Molly might indeed be Clayton, discreetly followed them to the Taco Bell. Once there, they called for backup, specifically requesting an officer who had prior interactions with Clayton and could positively identify him. As Molly and the man who appeared to be Clayton sat down to eat, an officer approached their table. In a moment fraught with tension, the officer directly asked the man if he was Clayton Daniels. The man denied the accusation, insisting he was someone else and even producing an ID card as proof. However, the experienced officer was not easily misled. The man's physical resemblance to Clayton, coupled with the suspicious circumstances, led the officer to trust his instincts. Molly and the man were taken into custody, and the man's fingerprints were taken during the booking process. The fingerprints confirmed what the police had suspected. The man who had been living as Jake and had tried to reinvent himself with a simple hair dye was indeed Clayton Daniels. 
This conclusive piece of evidence shattered the elaborate facade Clayton and Molly had constructed and marked the beginning of the end of their complex deception. Molly's role in the macabre scheme was undeniable. The keystroke logger on her computer revealed her active participation in planning the fraud, her searches painting a picture of a woman determined to escape her reality at any cost. In the end, justice was served, but not without leaving a trail of broken lives and shattered trust. Molly Daniels, the mastermind behind the plot, faced the consequences of her actions, her tears and apologies doing little to erase the gravity of her crimes. Clayton Daniels, the man who had lived a life of deceit and manipulation, found himself behind bars, his freedom a price paid for the choices he had made. The community of Leander, once a quiet town untouched by such scandalous tales, was left to grapple with the reality that such darkness could lurk in the heart of their neighborhood. The tale of Clayton and Molly Daniels unraveled and served as a stark reminder of deception's fragility. Their elaborate hoax, aimed at escaping the past, collapsed under the relentless pursuit of truth. Their story, transcending mere crime, affirmed that truth, however obscured, resolutely claims its place. Join the conversation. Drop a comment to share your thoughts and insights. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more captivating content. Thanks for tuning in to Really Unreal. Join us next time as we uncover another fascinating case. Stay curious, stay connected, stay with Really Unreal.